everything about history. Hello everyone, today we'll delve into the critical period of the Sakarya battle, a pivotal moment leading to the establishment of the Republic of Turkey. Don't forget to subscribe to channel and like videos for more. This battle marks a significant turning point in the Turkish War of Independence, showcasing the strategic and tactical prowess of the Turkish army. Ataturk's chess-like warfare tactics against the Greeks and much more have revolutionized numerous military strategies. His warfare intellect has left everyone in awe. Now, what would have happened if the Great Offensive hadn't taken place? Turkey, as the republic we know today, would likely not have existed. At best, we might have been confined to central and eastern Anatolia. To understand the Great Offensive, we need to review the what happens before leading up to it. After establishing the Grand National Assembly of Turkey, Ataturk found himself compelled to work with groups like the Kirkhazethan gangs. However, as a professional soldier, Ataturk knew their limitations. They couldn't succeed with warlord-type gang leaders. What they needed was a regular army, with a clear chain of command. Recognizing this, Ataturk tackled these challenges and sidelined such structures. One of the key events leading up to the Great Offensive was the Sakarya Battle. It was the first significant field battle the Turks had won in a very long time. What Turkish commanders noticed during this victory was Ataturk's unconventional warfare tactics. Even though he didn't adhere to traditional warfare rules, he kept winning. In military strategy and systems, there are two outcomes, winning and losing. No one listens to a losing commander. Ataturk consistently outperformed commanders who followed the conventional strategies taught at military academies. The Sakarya battle exemplifies this. Ataturk shattered the plans of the enemy to divide the front line, turning it from a north-south divide into an east-west one, thwarting their plans to push the Turkish army north towards the Black Sea. According to traditional military teachings, if a front line is breached, the army should retreat proportionally to the length of the breach. Turkish officers approached Ataturk with this concern. However, Ataturk replied that there was no need for such a retreat. If one military unit couldn't hold its ground, it would retreat to a defensible position, but the units on its flanks were not obliged to follow suit. They could continue fighting. This was a groundbreaking doctrine. Many Turkish officers were skeptical of this approach. When news arrived that Kaltape had fallen, a strategic location, they feared that the Greeks would advance to Ankara and conquer our lands. Ataturk reassured them that this wouldn't happen and that they would resist. Ataturk's decision on the front lines angered the opposing commander. This was because the Greek commander had been trained with the same books that Ataturk had read. He had certain doctrines in mind about how a battle should be fought and won. The Greek commander noticed that Ataturk was not following traditional warfare rules. Not adhering to these rules made it unpredictable to anticipate Ataturk's next moves. This uncertainty terrified the Greek commander. However, he believed that the battle must continue he decided to retreat the Greek army from Sakarya. By this point, 46% of the Turkish army had retreated, and two-thirds of Turkish officers had died. The Turkish army's resources were nearly depleted. Seeing the Greek army's retreat, Ataturk ordered an offensive for the next day. Upon receiving this order, General Ismet Inyun, a prominent Turkish officer, stood up angrily and said to Ataturk, Have you lost your mind? With what resources will we attack? Ataturk calmly responded, the key to victory lies in our minds. We won with our strategies, they lost with theirs. Upon this order, the Turkish army began its offensive. The Greeks thought the Turks were much stronger than they were, and hence, retreated to the Kutaya Eskisahir line. One of the factors that prepared for this great offensive was the presence of two different Greek corps, one commanded by Yenis in the north and the other by Trakopis in the south. The Greek commander, Hassianesti, was managing the battle from his mirror, without direct knowledge of the front lines. In contrast, Ataturk was always on the front lines. He planned to attack the enemy from where they were strongest, but Turkish officers believed they should attack the enemy's weak points. Ataturk argued that such an attack would only prolong the war, not end it. If they struck the Greeks where they were strongest, the Greek army would collapse. Despite their reservations, Ataturk tried to persuade them. He explained his plan. 
the first army would be in the south, and the majority of the second army's artillery should be sent south to balance the forces against the Greek corps there. General Jakub Zevki Passa objected. He argued that his area would be weakened, and that Yenis was opposite him. If this was noticed, the Greeks could march to Ankara unopposed. Aditur calmly assured him that Yenis couldn't do such a thing. Jakub Zevki Passa, however, was still not convinced, saying that if he moved a battalion, the Greeks would know immediately. Ataturk smiled and responded. If we move during the day, they'll know, we'll move at night, Ataturk managed to convince everyone. They covered the wheels of the artillery with cloth to move silently. Ataturk concentrated all his strength in the south. Additionally, the great success of Izmit in Yunpasa in the south must not be forgotten. They began shelling at 4.30 am and by 5.30 or 6.30, destructive fire began, by 7, the Greek guns fell silent. The Turkish officers couldn't understand. When the artillery fire stopped, Ataturk ordered a frontal assault. Meanwhile, Ferret and Altai's cavalry surrounded the southern Greek army, cutting off their retreat path. Ataturk's planned infantry assault was remarkably successful, demoralizing the Greeks. However, the Turkish officers still couldn't grasp why the Greek artillery stopped firing. The Turkish army swiftly reached the town of Uzak. The famous British marshal, Having previously surveyed Greek positions, had said that if the Turks took this position in six months, they should celebrate as if they took it in six days. The Turkish army took the position in three days. Ataturk could issue orders immediately whenever there was a need for a change in leadership. In contrast, Hassi was in Izmir. The southern Greek course began to collapse, and the Turks noticed. Trikopas kept sending messages to Yenis to come south, stating that the main Turkish offensive was in the south. Yenis, however, insisted that he had his own opponent there, General Jakub Zevki. He believed that if he moved, the northern army would outflank them. However, what the Greeks didn't know was Ataturk's brilliant strategy. The northern Turkish army had no resources. The Turks were monitoring all Greek communications. As a result, they surrounded the Greeks at Dumlupiner. Trikopis and the remaining Greek forces surrendered. Upon their capture, Ataturk, Favzi Passa, and Inyun greeted them. Ataturk welcomed them, saying, Welcome, Greeks. Approaching Trikopis, Ataturk said, Don't be sad, General. War is a game. There are winners and losers. Even though they had been captured, Ataturk treated the enemy commanders with respect, asking about their needs. Trikopis had only one request, to inform his wife in Istanbul that he was alive. Ataturk immediately sent a telegram. Before leaving, Ataturk congratulated Trikopis, saying, Hasi Anesti has been relieved of his duties. You are now the Greek commander-in-chief. Ataturk conducted the offensive like a game of chess, and the Greek commander stood in awe, admiring Ataturk's brilliance. Trikopis, driven by curiosity, asked Ataturk, Marshal, where did you command the battle from? Ataturk replied calmly, I was behind the soldiers running towards you with their rifles. Trikopis uttered the famous line. This is how wars are won. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to channel for more.